What is up, everybody? Welcome to the best damn Cerberus guide ever. In this guide, we're going to check out everything that has to do with Cerberus, including hard and suggested requirements, the location and how to get there, suggested gear setups, boss room layouts, mechanics and attacks, and some example fights and kills. So without further ado, let's get this one started. If you're looking for something specific, check the description below. There are timestamps down there. Hard requirements. For your hard requirements, there is one, but it can actually kind of be looked at in two different ways. Now, Cerberus is a Hellhound, so if you do get a Hellhound Slayer task, you can kill Cerberus, the Slayer boss. You do have to be on a Hellhound or Cerberus task to kill Cerberus because that's how Slayer bosses work. Got to be on a task. If you are on a Hellhound task, you can start killing Cerberus at level 86 Slayer with the use of a Wild Pie. One piece of the Wild Pie will boost your Slayer level 5 levels, taking you up to 91. I do not suggest doing it this way because you will only have 60 seconds of a boosted level up to 91 or 90 if you have the Preserve Prayer. As for the Cerberus dedicated Slayer task, you will need a Slayer level of 91 for this because you can only be assigned a Slayer monster or boss based on its specific Slayer level. Hellhounds, you can kill Cerberus starting at 86, but if you get a Cerberus task, you will only get it once you are level 91. Suggested Requirements As for your suggested requirements, if you are thinking about going over to Cerberus and getting some of those primordial crystals, I will suggest that you have at least an attack and strength level of both level 85. As for the defense level, level 75 is as low as I would go, and that is for the use of the Spectral Spirit Shield, which you see there underneath of the defense and strength level. As for prayer, 70 at a minimum, you do want to have that piety if you are using the melee attacking style. As for ranged, if you are going to range Cerberus, 85 is also going to be your minimum for ranged. I do suggest having the Spectral Spirit Shield for Cerberus. Obviously, it can be done without it, but the Spectral Spirit Shield does cut the Prayer Drain from a mechanic from Cerberus in half. So it go from 30 Prayer Points lost to 15 if you're using a Spectral Spirit Shield. It is expensive, but it is very useful to have. One more suggested requirement I have, if you do get a Hellhound task and you want to start Cerberus prior to 91 Slayer, I would suggest that you don't start killing Cerberus until level 88 Slayer with the help of a Wild Pie. I will also suggest that you have the Preserve Prayer. The Preserve Prayer makes boosted stats last 50% longer. So at level 88, that will boost you up to level 93. You will have time for level 93, 92, and 91. And with the use of the Preserve Prayer, that will give you 270 seconds of boosted level. So that is a good amount of time. That is over four minutes of time. Location and how to get there. This section is going to be a little bit long, so remember, check the description below if you're looking for something specific. We do have a few different options for getting to Cerberus, so we're going to start out with the Gilinor surface map. Now, here on the map, we can see a Cyan and Magenta line. There are two options here. If you start out in Falador, you can use a Falador teleport, teleport tablet, whatever. And you have two options. You can head to the southwest and hop over the rock wall. That does require level 5 agility, but... If you have 91 Slayer or somewhere around there, you probably have that. And then you can head to the Northwest, and that will take you to the entrance to the Taverly Dungeon. Additionally, if you don't go that way, you can head north, run all the way around the wall, and then to the Southwest, again, to the Taverly Dungeon. A quicker and faster option is going to be using the Taverly House Teleport Portal. You can use the scroll of redirection on a house teleport tablet and redirect your scrolls, or I'm sorry, your tablets to Taverly. You can teleport right there, head south, and enter the dungeon. Our first and very long option of getting to Cerberus is going to be the Dusty Key Route. Now with this one, I do suggest that you get some agility levels if you don't have them for the shortcuts that I will mention in a moment. Once again, description, timestamps, all that good stuff. So first, you will enter the Taverly Dungeon and head north, and then turn to your east at the Cauldron of Thunder, and then follow the path around into the Animated Axes. Now, if you don't have a Dusty Key, or you've never acquired one and do need one, you will want to go past the Poisonous Scorpions instead of turning where the Chaos Dwarves are. 
Once you get into the Black Knight base, you'll have to kill a Jailer who will drop a Jail Key, which you can use to open the cell and talk to that ghostly looking guy there, who will then give you a Dusty Key. You will then proceed back out of the Black Knight's base, up towards the Chaos Dwarves, past the Lesser Demons, use your key on the gate, through the Blue Dragons, and then all the way around through the Black Demons, the Poison Spiders, and the Hellhounds, you will end up at the entrance to Cerberus's lair. Make sure to protect from melee through the Poison Spiders so you don't get poisoned along the way. It happens very rarely. I do also want to point out that if you do need a Dusty Key and you don't feel like going to get one here, they actually do sell them at the Legends Guild after the completion of the Legends Quest. Our next method is going to be the Agility Shortcut, which is right next to the entrance to the Taverly Dungeon. You can see it there highlighted in the blue circle. You'll need 70 Agility to cross through this pipe, or 65 if you use a Summer Pie. So I recommend you have at least 65, and then you can start using this route. And then you'll once again follow the red line past the Blue Dragons, the Black Demons, through the Poison Spiders, and once again to Cerberus's Lair. Next up is going to be your level 80 agility shortcut, and this is a spike jump. You will enter the Taverly Dungeon once again and head to your north. Off to the west, there will be a spike jump shortcut. It does require level 80 agility or level 75 with a summer pie. Jump over the spikes through the Poison Spiders, over past the Hellhounds, and into Cerberus's Lair. Once you enter Cerberus's Lair, or more accurately, the Key Master's Place, you will head to your north. You will notice that it splits off in three directions. There is a Cerberus at each one of these corridors, so it doesn't matter which way you go, you will find a Cerberus. There is a winch. You will click on the winch. It will turn the winch and raise the gate, and you will enter the actual lair to Cerberus. So whichever one you fancy or whichever direction is your favorite, pick one, and off you go. Now, last but not least, I do want to cover the Keymaster Teleport. The Keymaster Teleport is a teleport scroll which is dropped only by Cerberus. They are untradeable. You cannot buy them on the Grand Exchange. You do have the opportunity to get these from Cerberus at a drop rate of 1 in 64. Drops three at a time. It will teleport you directly to the Keymaster. It is your fastest method to get there. Outside of the Keymaster Teleport, your fastest method is going to be the level 80 agility shortcut. Suggested Gear Setups the first gear setup that we are going to start with is going to be the low tier setup. This is going to be gear and inventory. So first thing you're going to want to have is a Slayer helmet or a black mask because you are on a Slayer test. Definitely want that plus 15% to attack and strength. Fire cape, amulet of fury, Rada's blessing is what I have here, but any blessing will do. If you don't have the best one from the Kevos Karend Elite Diaries, just use another one. As for your weapon, it is going to be the Arclight in a recent update. Cerberus was classed as a demon, so the Arclight does now work at Cerberus. In the chest slot, you will have a Fighter's Torso. Offhand is going to be a Dragon Defender, Obsidian Plate Legs, Barrow's Gloves, Dragon Boots, and a Berserker's Ring imbued. Now, as for the low tier setup, this is usually used by beginners. So we're looking at an inventory here to maximize the amount of kills that you're going to get a trip. While you are learning, you want to have a bit more food. Your special attack weapon is going to be the Dragon Dagger. You'll want to take one Divine Super Combat Potion, six Prayer Potions, one Stamina Potion, and two Taverly Teleports. That's what I went with. You can use the Taverly, the first Taverly Teleport to teleport to the portal and then head south to the entrance to the dungeon. And then you can use the other one to revert it back to a house teleport, saving you an inventory space. As for everything else, fill up the rest of your inventory with your chosen food. I have manta rays here. You can use anglerfish, sharks, sea turtles, or summer pies if you so choose. Next up is our medium tier setup for this one. Once again, the Slayer Helmet, because we are on a Slayer task to kill Cerberus. Fire Cape, for the amulet here, I do have the Amulet of Blood Fury. It gives good defense bonuses and also gives you the chance to have that passive healing effect when it does successfully proc. It can extend your trips quite a bit. Rada's Blessing in the Blessing slot, but once again, use whatever you have. Arclight as our main weapon. Fighter's Torso, Dragon Defender, Bandos Tacits, Barrow's Gloves, Dragon Boots, and a Berserker's Ring imbued. Over in the inventory, for this one, I do have the Spectral Spirit Shield. The Spectral Spirit Shield is very useful at Cerberus because it cuts a certain Mechanic's Prayer Drain in half, which we will get into in the Mechanics and Attacks section. As for the special attack weapon, this is also a Dragon Dagger. I tried to get some decent gear in here while still providing some affordability for the Spectral Spirit Shield. If you do have the money to get one, you definitely want to have it. As for this one, we have boosted our Prayer Potion usage up a little bit. In this one, we have 10 Prayer Potions, one Super Combat, the Divine one, two Taverly Teleports, once again, a Stamina Potion to get there, 
and the rest is going to be your food of choice. Once again, I have manta rays. Additionally, this is optional. Once you get a little bit of experience and can extend your trips, you might want to bring a rune pouch with nature runes and fire runes in it for high level alchemy. Next up is our high tier setup. And for the gear and inventory, this one is going to be in the helmet slot. Once again, is the Slayer helmet. We have an Infernal Cape in the Cape slot, Amulet of Blood Fury, Rada's Blessing 4. Scythe of Vitor is actually your best in slot weapon here, and that will have to be set to Crush. Inquisitor's Hauberk and Plate Skirt for your top and bottom. Ferocious Gloves in the Gloves slot, Primordial Boots and a Berserker's Ring imbued. Over in the inventory, our switch for the Ghosts is going to be the Inquisitor's Mace and the Spectral Spirit Shield. We have two Divine Super Combat Potions. Our special attack weapon with this is going to be the Dragon Claws, which is kind of funny. You'd think it would be the Bandos God Sword, but it is actually more DPS when you're using a Scythe with Inquisitors to use the Dragon Claw Special Attack. 15 Super Restore Potions, 6 Manta Rays. With this gear setup, the Blood Fury will sustain you just fine with the Scythe of Vitor. Rune Pouch is definitely going to be needed in this one. 100 Nature Runes, 500 Fire Runes. You can bring as many as you want, obviously. And for your Teleports, the Max Cape. Or you can replace that with a Construction Cape or House Teleports, however you want to work it out. Next up, we are going to check out our medium tier ranged setup. Now, I'm not doing a low tier for this because I personally wouldn't go to Cerberus with anything less than a medium tier ranged setup with the ranging option. As for the helmet, Slayer helmet imbued for this one. It will have to be imbued, so you get the additional plus 15 bonus also with the ranging skill. Ava's Assembler, Amulet of Fury, Rada's Blessing, Toxic Blowpipe, and you're going to want to have Adamant Darts or better. Blessed Dragon Hide Chest and Legs, doesn't matter which one, they all do the same thing. Barrow's Gloves, Blessed Boots, and an Archer's Ring imbued. Over in the inventory for our Switch for the Ghosts, you want to have at least Rune Knives and a Spectral Spirit Shield, one Divine Bastion Potion, a Ceradomen Brew, and seven Prayer Potions, one Super Restore, two Taverly Teleport Tablets, and fill the rest up with your food of choice. Next up is our high tier range setup, and this is best in slot for range. Slayer Helmet imbued. The Max Cape is what you're going to want to use in your Cape slot with the Vorcast head added to it. It will act as an assembler, but you want the prayer bonus over the damage when using a Twisted Bow, which is our weapon. Necklace of Anguish in the Necklace slot. The Twisted Bow will be paired with the Dragon Arrows. If you are using a Tebow, you always want to use Dragon Arrows. Armadillo Chestplate and Chain Skirt. Barrow's Gloves, Pegasian Boots, and a Ring of Suffering imbued this is for the defense bonus as well as an additional prayer bonus cerberus does use range attacks and since your melee defense is going to be a little bit lower since you're using ranging armor you want to boost that defensive stat over in the inventory we have our switch for the ghosts as dragon throwing knives and spectral spirit shield we also have a toxic blowpipe in there because we do want to use that special attack for additional heals if you ever actually hit with it god only knows if you're actually going to get some use out of that thing one Bastion Potion, one Ceradomen Brew, eight Super Restores, in the Rune Pouch, Nature Runes, and Fire Runes, and fill it up with food. Last but not least is going to be my personal setup. I accidentally wore a regular Fire Cape when working on this screenshot and not the Max Fire Cape. Whoops. Anyways, Slayer Helmet in the Helmet slot, a Fire Cape, or in my case, a Fire Max Cape. Amulet of Blood Fury for the healing, Rada's Blessing 4, Scythe of Vitor on Crush, Bando's Chestplate and Tacits, Ferocious Gloves, Primordial Boots, and a Berserker's Ring imbued. As for my Ghost Switch, I'm using the Arclight paired with the Spectral Spirit Shield. My special attack weapon is actually going to be the Bando's God Sword. With the special attack with the Bando's God Sword, you're only going to want to use that if you're using a Scythe with anything other than Inquisitors. If you are actually using Inquisitors, with the scythe, you will replace that with dragon claws for the special attack. As for the rest of my inventory, two divine super combat potions, 15 prayer potions, seven manta rays, rune pouch with natures and fires, and the max cape is my way out. Boss room layout. Cerberus's boss room is very simple. There's not much to know about it. The only two things that you actually have to know is at the beginning of the room, once the fight has started, a wall of flames will come up, preventing you from immediately leaving. You will have to click on them to get out if you want to get out while the fight is going on. If you do pass through these flames, you will take a little bit of damage, regardless of whether you are starting the fight and somebody left it up like that, or if you are leaving. The other thing you should know is you'll see this giant kind of demonic skull over here. This is where the ghosts come out, which we will cover 
in the mechanics and attacks section. Ghosts will come out of here, so you'll have to pay close attention to this part as well. As for the rest of the room, it is pretty open. Don't worry about the fire. You can stand next to it. The only one you will want to avoid is stepping through the entrance fire so you don't take any damage while you're in the middle of the kill or reset Cerberus. Mechanics and Attacks so we're going to start out here with Cerberus' basic attack. She does use magic, ranged, and melee, all styles of the combat triangle. As for the magic attack, you will see a gray ball coming at you. The ranged attack is also a gray ball, but this one will have spikes protruding from it. And for the melee attack, she will just lean in and chomp on you. Now don't mind my wrong prayers here. I just did a screen cap quickly from the clip I'm going to show you guys soon. The prayers you will actually be flicking through this, which is why they seem to be wrong. But we'll cover that in just a second. So what we're going to take a look at now is going to be the order of attacks from Cerberus. This can be readily found on the old school wiki under the Cerberus strategy guide page. So the first attack from Cerberus is always going to be a combination attack. It is always going to be in the order of magic, ranged and melee. So you can quickly flick those prayers to prevent all of that damage. And there's also a special trick, which I will show you in the kill clip that we'll talk about in just a couple minutes. As for that, another combo attack will occur every 10 attacks. So you have one on one, 11 and 21. Everything else is an auto attack. You can also see the ghosts and the ghosts will only come out on the seventh attack only if Cerberus is less than 400 HP. So if you have really good damage, you might have the ghosts there. The next ghost is on attack number 14. And this is again, only if less than 400 HP. Next is the lava bulls only if less than 200 HP on attack number 20. And then a combo following that. This is the place where you might get splattered. Lava in the combo attack can screw you up depending on how low your HP is. So you definitely want to keep your HP at least above 50 so you don't get comboed out. You can also here get lava and ghosts at the same time, depending on Cerberus's HP. So if your DPS is good, you want to watch out for that. All right, let's quickly take a look at the combo attack. Like I said, the combo attack is always going to be in the same order, magic, ranged, and melee. Start out by starting the fight, and as soon as you see that first magic ball from Cerberus, switch to ranged prayer. As soon as you see the ranged ball come out, switch to melee, and then after Cerberus chomps you and you see the hit splat pop up, you can then switch back to magic prayer and continue on the fight. Now you can watch for the combo attacks throughout the fight by an animation stall. I don't worry about it because I have really good DPS, so I don't really have to be concerned with that. But if you do notice the animation stall, Cerberus kind of leans in just a little bit, you know a combo attack is coming. Next, let's check out the ghost attack. This attack is indicated when Cerberus howls, and you will see this in a text form, Aru, over Cerberus's head. The summoned souls, or the ghosts, will be summoned from that demonic looking skull, and they will come down the river. These are in line with the combat triangle. Blue is a magic attack, red is a melee attack, and green is a ranged attack. They each attack once, and if you are not protecting against them correctly, it will deal 30 damage unless you have like an Elijah Spirit Shield, which does reduce the damage and it procs. If you are protecting against it, it will still drain 30 prayer points, but this is where the Spectral Spirit Shield comes in very handy. It will reduce this prayer drain by 50%, so only 15 prayer points are reduced from each attack. You cannot avoid the prayer drain, whether you are praying correctly or incorrectly, it will always drain prayer. The only thing you can mitigate is the damage by using the correct overhead prayer. The next and last mechanic that you will see is going to be the lava pools, and these can be incredibly deadly if they are paired with a summon souls attack at the same time. So like I said before, keep an eye out for that. As for the lava attack, this will be indicated by a gur over top of Cerberus in a text form. You will just need to move away from these lava pools. So you can't stand on it or you will take rapid heavy damage. If you stand on any of the adjacent squares, you will also take damage. So your best bet is to just move a few tiles away and continue killing Cerberus. You will see three of these pools pop out anytime you get lava pools. Example fights and kills. All right, so the first thing you wanna do with Cerberus, you wanna stand under Cerberus and watch. Now, since I'm using a Bandos God Sword, I'm gonna use my spec. When I step out from under Cerberus from starting the fight, you're actually going to get a few free ticks. Notice that Cerberus is not attacking me. After my scythe swing, that's when the attack starts. So let's start this kill over real quick. Now again, I'm starting the kill under Cerberus. I'm using a Bandos God Sword with my scythe, so I'm going to go ahead and start the fight off with my special attack. I'm going to use the spec. 
and then switch over to the scythe and i like to stand on this side of server so i'm gonna run back over here and here's the flick magic ranged melee and back to magic so that is the start of the fight and now all we have to worry about is basic attacks until we have a ghost come based on the chart that we saw earlier on the order of attacks so the ghost should be coming here in just a second so there's the aru the ghosts are coming i'm gonna go ahead and switch to my rapier and spectral spirit shield magic prayer melee prayer and ranged prayer to stave off the ghosts now i am using a grazi rapier because i did actually record this sometime around christmas time for this guide which you can see cerberus has a few party hats on so let's go ahead and check out one more kill just for experience sake so once again starting out under cerberus got my special attack ready i'm gonna go ahead and attack cerberus here so there's that switch to the scythe and get my first attack off and the combo attacks coming magic ranged melee and then on to the basic attacks There's the Aru, the ghosts are coming, magic, melee, ranged is the order, so I'm going to go ahead and put on my rapier and my spirit shield, get ready for that, magic prayer, melee prayer, ranged prayer, and back to magic, and switch back to my main weapon, which is the scythe, and this was actually a good example here for the lava pools, they can come very shortly after the ghosts, or sometimes while the ghosts are actually happening, so be aware of that, it can be very, very deadly. Ending words. Cerberus is a very fun Slayer boss to fight. It is actually my favorite Slayer boss in the game. Now, I want to say don't get discouraged if you're having a little bit of trouble with the prayer flicks on the combo attack and the ghost. Just try to eat through them until you learn it is muscle memory. Eventually, you will get the timing down and it'll be second nature to you and you'll just flick it no problem back into the fight and you'll be getting awesome speed kills in no time. As usual, guys, thank you for watching this guide. If you enjoyed it and learned something, please leave a thumbs up down below. And if you haven't done so yet, you can tap the subscribe button on your way out. All of your guys' support means a ton to me. I will see you on the next one. Take it easy, everybody.